Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, I've been meaning to do this for a while. It's um, it's been a while, and I said I would, so I'm doing it now. Uh, but basically, this video is to answer all the questions that were posted in my Discord. Uh, I told people if they had any questions in particular that they wanted to know my perspective on, they could put them in a channel in Discord, and I would eventually get to them in video form. So that's what this is. Um, yeah, hope you enjoy. Uh, we'll get right into it. Okay. Uh, for us, here's a life question for you. How important do you think college is, or conversely, how irrelevant do you think it is? And do you believe that you need to attend college in order to affect meaningful changes in the world? Uh, that's from Mackay. I'm pretty sure I already answered this question, but we'll just answer it anyway. Um, I do not think college is important. Uh, I myself went to the University of Calgary and I have a Bachelor's of Science in Electrical Engineering, as well as I have uh, two, two more years in miscellaneous subjects like psychology, astron astronomy, yeah, astronomy, uh, computer science, etc. And honestly, it's nice to know these things. It's important knowledge and stuff. And if you want to work on in that field, like if I wanted to be an engineer, like I really wanted to fucking, uh, you know, make uh, semiconductors and and work with nanotechnology, then that information would be useful to me. That would be would be good. Would be wonderful. But by no means does that affect me, uh, who I am just in particular. So I guess it varies from person to person. Like if you are just really passionate about something within academia, which of course is very hard to know until you get into academia, um, then yeah, college is super important. Although I feel like you could just learn that stuff anyway. Um, my garage is going, sorry about that. Um, I feel like you could just learn, self-learn a bunch of that stuff anyway, especially with the internet and stuff like that. And the way the world's going, degrees are becoming more and more prevalent. And for example, there's so many more master's degrees now than there were. People have master's degrees uh, way more than they did before. And, uh, and schools are slowly, well, not slowly, they've actually very quickly become less about teaching and more about business and making money and getting funding so that they can, you know, uh, do more research so that they can <laughs> attract more people, uh, so they can get more equipment, you know, so on and so forth. So I don't think it is necessary. I don't think it is important. However, having a degree can make th make certain things easier for you. Um, you know, it, it, it can open doors in life for you, uh, which is, which is a, a decent thing, which is a good thing. Um, However, it also comes at a cost, you know, you, you give up a lot of time in your life, uh, especially if you're not enjoying the time and, uh, it's expensive. So, you know, you got to go into debt probably to get the education that you want. Um, yeah, you just got to weigh the options, see if it works for you. Uh, like for example, fucking like becoming a doctor. <laughs> that's a pretty big thing. <laughs> that's a pretty big thing, but whatever, we'll get into uh, 11 years and two of residency. And then you got to pay off all that med school bills. And then, you know, there's just so much. So in my opinion, just for me, I can, I can speak for myself. It is not a hundred percent necessary, uh, to affecting the world, uh, or whatever you want to do or having a purpose or whatever. But I am glad I do have a degree, an engineering degree, because I will always have that as a fallback at the very least. Um, okay, next question. Uh, Faraz, do you believe you should have regrets in your life? Also from Makai. Um, I believe that no one wants to have regrets in their lives. And people should strive to live a life where they don't have to have regrets. But regrets are almost impossible not to have throughout your entire life, you know, uh, straight from when you're a kid, 
uh, you know, you're probably going to have some regrets, probably something you didn't do, probably something you didn't have the wisdom to do, probably something where you look back now and you're like, oh, fuck, I was a kid and I did that shit. I wish I didn't do that. You know, it's hard not to have regrets. And then you can get into the whole philosophy of like, well, you know, if I didn't do that, then I wouldn't be the person I am today. So I shouldn't regret what I did and stuff. And it gets a little bit complicated. Um, but should people have regrets in their lives? You know, I don't know. But I can say that I myself would like to strive to live a life where I, I act in confidence and I act in grace and all my decisions are made as such. And even if something goes wrong or something goes bad, uh, I will not have regrets because I know that I made this, the decision uh, as best as I could. Okay, <laughs> what is the meaning of life? Well, uh, I think I watched this movie and I think it's 42. That's from Poon Model. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, here's one I've been wondering about a lot off and on. This is, is Vincent saying this. Vincent, uh, how do you find the balance between ambition and happiness? Some of the most ambitious, garage again, people disregard morality and other people to con and other people to compulsively get what they want, while some happy people seem complacent and passive. Uh, another way to put this question is how can you be happy where you are while still aiming for different things? If you have thoughts on this, Sensei Faraz, that's embarrassing to me, or anyone else, let me know. Um, okay, so my thoughts on this. Um, happiness and ambition. You have to look at what makes you happy and you have to look at, you know, what you're passionate about as well, because that's where ambition comes from most of the time. I mean, ambition can come from all sorts of different places. Uh, you know, ambition is a very broad term. You can have ambitions that are bad, negative, malicious, you know, to hurt other people, not good. Revenge-based ambitions, even though that's not really the general term. Or you can have ambitions that are, uh, you know, in, in tune with yourself and, and serve you which are good as well. So I think ambition is a, is a, is a term that's, I don't know, it's hard to define. And if I was talking to Vince, I'd probably ask him a little bit more to clarify what he meant on ambition. Um, but happiness is very different. Okay. So theoretically, and I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me about this. Theoretically, every single person, uh, even starving, starving starving people even diseased people you know dying people people missing limbs people you know in copious amounts of pain every single person has the capacity to be happy and there are countless examples of this there's count there's examples of people dying and they just feel so nice so euphoric so wonderful I'm not saying euphor euphoria is happiness but um what i'm trying to say is it's all inside everything is inside you always have the capacity to be happy it's not easy but it's there right it's there you can you can be doing the hardest worst thing the most stressful thing in the world and you can still be happy um so what i think vince is trying to get at is uh complacent and passive uh Content, contentness maybe, which is contentness versus, uh, um, ambition. And I would say that's, that's, that's a very broad question to be honest, but I'll base it down to one small or not one one small little phrase that that I guess could be applied to the problem uh, would be that as long as in life you make decisions and move in a direction that inspires growth within you as a person, uh, you always follow growth rather than comfort or you always try and be better or or you know so on and so forth 
you you follow you know your really deep deep true self your passion quote unquote i don't know if passion is used correctly here but um then you will both be happy in learning and growing as a person and you won't have any shortage of ambition so uh yeah sorry i couldn't answer that too well but i hope you don't mind okay next question um Do you have any tips for dealing with chronic stress dreams? It's becoming maddening to wake up every morning in a cold sweat thinking about how everything is going wrong only to realize that I'm freaked out about actually nothing. Uh, says K-N-O. No, K-N-O. Uh, I, yeah, K-N-O. Um, I've had chronic, well, not chronic stress dreams. I don't know if that's a diagnosis or what, but I've had dreams, like traumatic dreams that happen after a traumatic event over and over and over and over again. And yeah, it freaks you out and stuff like that, and uh, <laughs> it's bad. So I don't know if this is the same thing, but I can I can I can give you what what I think is the solution to my problem, and hopefully it applies to yours. Is I can say that uh, if you're having dreams and they're repeated and they're around the same event, that means that the traumatic event that happened in the past is causing the dreams. So therefore, you have to go back to the traumatic event and see. Uh, what unresolved business you have? Like, uh, are you lacking closure? Did you not say something you wanted to say something? Do you have guilt about some event that happened during that traumatic event that you haven't come to terms with yet? Are you, uh, you know, suppressing something? You have to make peace with whatever happened. And it's not easy and it'll take, you know, uh, complicated measures that, you know, are specific to the problem. But... After that, your dreams should go away because I think the dreams are your mind's way of telling you that, hey, you're not over this, man. Hey, like you need to address this. Otherwise, this is going to get worse. Um, so, yeah, I think I think that you just you have to go and confront it. You have to go and confront the problem. Okay, uh, Mikhail's question already answered that one, so we'll skip that. Uh, regrets, blah, blah, blah. People badgering me about <laughs> answering the questions. Um, okay, 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 we got one. We got one. Where is it? Life question. How can I work on my self-confidence? Okay. Again, very broad question, but... I, I can only give you something that I can think of relative to myself in that there are things you like about yourself um, always and there are things that you dislike dislike about yourself. Uh, everybody, everybody has these things, right? So analyze what do you like about yourself and why and what do you dislike about yourself and why, right? And I don't know if you need to write this down if you can't, can't keep track of it, but then analyze the reasons, is this a good reason? Is this a bad reason? Does this reason come from me, myself, and what I believe, or another, uh, a past traumatic event, or someone else, or from my parents, or something, you know? Um, is this something I can work on? Is this something I can change, you know? And if I can't change it, then, you know, that's how it is. Uh, you gotta, you gotta accept it. But if you can change it, do you want to change it, you know? Um, and you have to ask all these questions about the things. You have to do like a, a little bit of a self-analysis. I mean, you don't have to. There's other ways to, to do this. But um, analyzing these things and asking yourselves these questions, and not just uh, about this, you have to analyze your behaviors as well and ask yourself questions about that. I wrote a blog post earlier about self-worth and self-sabotage. Um and self-worth and self-sabotage heavily, 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 heavily relates to self-confidence. So analyze your behaviors. Ask yourself why you're doing that. Ask yourself if that is really you doing that or an emotional traumatic event uh, that is causing a patternistic behavior within you. Um, and then you got to move from there. But that's the first step. Okay.
Uh, so another question. One of my friends just came up to me asking what I think of death. She's freaking scared of losing a beloved one. I was just talking to her and said my opinion and tried to calm her down, but I'd like to hear you guys for some advice or maybe even your opinion to this kind of topic. That's from Dr. Chillout. And people are being nice and answering his question for me because I haven't haven't fucking been answering these questions. Uh, but, okay, so as far as we know, death is inevitable. You know, if you... Jeez, if you... Uh, if you're living, you're going to die. As far as we know, right now, who knows? Maybe one day they'll orchestrate some way to grant immortality and then we have a whole different set of problems to deal with. But for right now, death is inevitable and uh, that's not going to change. So all you have control of, you don't have control of death. Uh, you know, you don't have control of the people around you, the the the. the the things that are happening around you, what if the earthquake happens, you know, if an earthquake happens, you don't have control of that. If the earthquake happens and swallows your entire city, you're probably going to die, you know, so you don't have control of that. Maybe, maybe another person across the world uh, randomly decides to move to your town and commit some mass murder um, and you die. You know, you don't have control over that either. Well, not really. You have less control over that. Um, so, you don't have control over death, right? And in life, you don't have control over anybody else, anything else, uh, your, your, your surroundings, really. Um, you only have control over yourself. And the only thing that you're able to do in this case is to live your life to the fullest, not live in fear, not try and prevent things you can't prevent, not worry about things that you can't prevent, you know? Um, so in that respect, all I can say is what I think of death is it's going to happen. But because of that, I would like to do my very best to live my life to the fullest, to every day learn something new about myself, about others, whatever, uh, grow as a person, uh, become better, stronger, good, and bring happiness to others. Uh, and as such, I, I, I believe I'm I'm doing everything I can. Okay. Uh, I think I think I think yeah. Again, very broad question, but I think that's I think that's all I can give you for now. Um, that's it. Okay, I caught up on all the questions. Uh, hopefully, you guys like this video. I know it's not my usual Dark Souls content. Um, and yeah, thanks for the questions, guys. Uh, I don't think I'm going to edit this. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to edit this. Uh, I might put some music in, but probably not. But yeah, let me know what you think. And if you have further questions, yeah, post them in the Discord. And thank you so much for watching and subscribing and, uh, you know making me able to do this almost full time. Okay. Bye-bye.